You played some defensive end and linebacker at Penn State. The interviews you've had so far, have you gotten an idea from teams where they view you playing at, or is there a consensus at the uh, next level? Honestly, you know, they feel comfortable with me playing either or position. Uh, they, they've been asking me where I feel the most comfortable. Um, like I said, I'm a defender. Uh, the goal for me is to be the most disruptive defender on the field. I'm comfortable playing the defensive end position, linebacker, whether it's inside or outside. It doesn't matter. You're going to be a football player. Uh, is there a preference though? Like, it, would there be a position of those two that you think gives you the best chance to succeed, or does, that, say, uh, does that depend on scheme? I say it depends on the scheme. Uh, but for me to uh, to reach my my full potential, I see myself playing outside yeah. linebacker. Is that an approach that you kind of adopted or maybe learned from uh, Micah and knowing him for so well that you know he's an edge rusher, kind of linebacker, what, whatever they kind of need him to do? Absolutely. Um, it just goes back to the, who we are as people. Me, Micah, Adafi. Uh, you know, we, we lived together our, our entire four years at Penn State. Um, and that's just the kind of the message that we try to reiterate, um, you know, amongst ourselves. You know, we push each other, we hold each other accountable, and ultimately, you know, we make each other better football players because of it. There was a time, Jesse, when, when a player bounced between positions easily, and that was a negative. Now you become, you know, versatile, hybrid, a positionless player. Is it positive now? Absolutely. Um, I, look myself, I look at myself as a chess piece, um, you know, Schematically, it's hard to game plan um, with, with a player that who's, who's as versatile and do so many things in that nature. Um, and I just feel as if that's that's the way the game's trending. Uh, you know, you want a, a player that's able to do a multitude of things. Um, you know, so that's that's what you're getting in, in just Lucetta. What were you able to prove at the Senior Bowl, and maybe, or what was your number one goal that you think you accomplished there? I say the number one goal for me was uh, just showing I could get home. Uh, you know, I finished the season with you no know, .5 sacks, um, and honestly, I had I had two sacks in the Senior Bowl more than I had uh, you know throughout this entire season. So I was extremely content with that. Um, I felt as if I had a, a strong week, uh, continue to make splash plays, continue to you know develop and, and compete at a high level. So um, I felt I had a great show in the Senior Bowl. If you were going to be a pass rusher or a defensive end in the NFL, what's the biggest area that you think you have to improve upon moving forward? Is it technical or? I say uh, everything. Um, you know, the art of pass rushing is it's not just one thing. It's every, everything goes into it. So I just say, you know, mastering my technique and truly mastering the art of getting home because uh, they pay they pay the big bucks for the guys who get home on the quarterbacks. Have you met with the Seahawks at all during this process? Uh, I have not. How about the Steelers? I have. What would it be like to go Pittsburgh? Kind of maybe have their connections to Penn State and all that. I mean, I'm gonna go wherever they they, they select me, but uh, playing that type of defense would be tremendous. You know, they got they have some, some pretty talented ball players in uh, in Pittsburgh. Was it a formal or an informal? Uh, it was an informal. Was that this week or down at the Senior Bowl? Uh, both. I met with them in mobile. I met with them uh, on uh, Wednesday when I arrived as well. What do you think that Senior Bowl performance did for you in the draft? I personally feel as if it skyrocketed my my, uh, my projection of where you know, scouts and GMs they see me. Um, I was able to you know truly put my my skill sets on full display. Uh, who I am as a person uh, on the field as well as off the field interviews, uh, and ultimately put myself in a, in a better situation. You did a lot of things well in that week, not just in the game. What do you think is the thing that stood out the most? I'd say my high motor, uh, as well as my high energy. Um, those who know me know my energy is infectious. Uh, you know. I come off as a leader, uh, you know, you're going to hear me, you're going to feel me whether you like it or you don't. What about now? What do you think you need to show in this process and then eventually the I just say my, you know, my putting my athletic ability on full display. Uh, you know, I'm going to jump out the gym. Uh, that's, something, that's something I'm very looking forward to. Uh, I'm ultimately showing my, displaying my straight line speed, 40, uh, shuttle, and three going. You have any some questions though that some of the other draft analysts have put out there about change of direction. Absolutely. You think those are fair? You think you'll be able to show you better than you do? Absolutely. I feel as if I'm going to be able to display that I do move in space. I'm able to transition very well uh, and kind of negate those things so that they that they have a you know, their perception of me. You have a unique background coming from Canada. How do you think that shaped you as a player and as a person with your whole journey coming to Canada? Um, honestly, it's, it's who I am as a person, you know, dating back to my mother, you know, she, she's a single mother to, to eight children. Um, I'm the youngest being, uh, she left a war-torn country from uh, leaving the Democratic Republic of Congo to ultimately allow me and my siblings to have a better opportunity at life. Uh, in doing so, you know, I've seen her struggle my entire life. Um, 
um, I was raised by my siblings. Those who know me know I, I like to kind of preach that on Son of the Village because I wouldn't be here without my, uh, my village's supporters. Um, I'm extremely grateful for that. Um, the coaches, um, you know, all the family members who played a, a part in my journey to ultimately allow me to be in the position I'm in today. Uh, but, you know, my why is my mom. Everything she's done for me, how selfless she was. That's why I learned how to how to work hard, um, how to be selfless. Um, you know how to be diligent with everything I do. Uh, it goes back to her. Uh, that's somebody who I consider a big bro for me. Uh, you know, just talking of what to expect in mobile senior bowl. Um, what to expect here in uh, you know, Indianapolis with the Combine. Um, you know, he's been able to, to mentor me. He's been able to uh, in a sort of help keep me prepared and uh, ensure that you know, I'm, I'm going to know what to expect and allow this transition for me to, to go that much smoother. Do you imagine you have kids from Ottawa playing big schools and It's crazy. If you would have told the 10-year-old Jesse Duqueta that you know, he'd have the opportunity to be doing this, I would have told you absolutely I agree, but my peers, they would have they would, they would laughed at you, but um, you know, if that happens, it's going to be a blessing. Just, you guys are similar in terms of that position of versatility. Yeah. You mentioned you live together. What did you learn from watching him? Uh, watching Mike's situation, it's been a blessing just to see how um, he's been able to continue to develop um, as a football player and especially just as a man off the field. Um, but you know, just going through this entire process, he's been he's been in my ear, you know, being able to you know let me know, you know what he feels like. I need to I need to put on full display um, what I need to continue to work at and dominate, especially you know throughout the entire week in mobile. Uh, you know, we would talk every day after practice. You know, I'd be sending him some clips. Um, but you know that's that's my brother, someone you know I'm forever grateful for to have in my corner. Because you know we're talking love, we're just talking life. Um, Jesse, there's been a bit of a Jesse, there's been a bit of Canadian revolution, if you will, in the NFL recently. Absolutely. Guys like John Mechie are coming in in this class. You have Chase Claypool, you have Chubba Hubbard, you have yeah. all these Canadians. What in the world is going on up in Canada right now that's Listen, allowing them to, to come out like that? That's that's the quote. We're everywhere. Um, you know, the talent in Canada is. It's, it's untapped, you know, so just being, being able to be in this position and kind of, you know, shun that that light over uh, back home is, is everything, you know. Um, it's, it's always been bigger than us. You know, there's so much talent in Canada, but, you know, they're not given the same opportunities. They're not given the same uh, the same playing field. So kind of showing that, you know, yes, we're Canadian. Yes, you know, we're kind of taking the NFL by storm. Uh, we're, we're, we're changing we're changing the stigma I said is there some sort of like brotherhood between the Canadian players there's only about I think seven eight of you guys that absolutely. are going to be in so absolutely you know just being able to be in contact with, with guys like Mechie you know me and Mechie we grew up together being able to play for Team Ontario come over here uh, to United States and, and compete in a uh, AT&T Stadium um, guys like Josh Palmer um, guys like uh, Chuba Hubbard you know you know we're, we're tight knit we try to communicate and kind of motivate each other whenever we have the opportunity to. I know he's on the other side of the country. Claypool in that brotherhood as well Absolutely. with you guys? It's, it's, is there something about the coaching culture in Canada that allows the Canadian players to kind of come together as that camaraderie? Is Are the coaches just as much of, a, of an influence in Canada as, as the players Absolutely. are right now? I feel as if, you know, um, coaches, they, they all have a role to play. You know, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for, for a coach who helped me and believed in me and invested in my dreams from a very young age, Danny Nizrella. Um, you know, he, he believed in my dreams when a lot of people didn't. And ultimately, you know, he's somebody who's, who's still in my corner and someone who I'm forever grateful for. Jesse, what about the Penn State program did you like the most and what made you want to go there? I mean, how could you not want to go play in Beaver Stadium? 170K thousand fans, it doesn't get better than that. But honestly, just being able to go experience the whiteout as a recruit, um, see what it was like, the brotherhood, um, and just know that, you know, I go to Penn State, I'm going to have the opportunity to go get a great degree. To go have the opportunity to go win championships and have the opportunity uh, to, to go and go move forward with the NFL. Um, that was a no-brainer for me. Um, I wasn't a guy that was, was truly invested in going to visit any other institutions because I didn't take any other official visits. Uh, you know, Penn State somewhere that's that's always going to be near and dear for me. Uh, uh, just being able to talk skiing, talk uh, talk life, and my story. Uh, you know, that's that'd be a great fit, great place to go play football. Yes, sir.